Hey everyone, Alex here, coming at you from the CactusCon Discord command post. It's my pleasure to bring you our next talk, Introduction to Car Hacking Basics, with K Turbo Yoda Singh, who's an incident responder with BlackBerry Security Services and part-time car tinkerer. Don't forget to stay tuned after the talk for live Q&A. Just go ahead and click the link on your screen. Enjoy! Hey guys, my name is Kay, and this is my CactusCon 2021 presentation on Introduction to Car Hacking Basics. Um, before we begin, a quick disclaimer. If you try to actually take any of this to your car and fry something, don't come after me. I'm not liable. I can't afford to pay you out if you decide to sue me or come after me. Um, if you learn something from this presentation, which I hope you do, and you try it on your car or someone else's car, um, and you break something, don't come after me. You, you know, you do this at your own risk. It's pretty easy to fry a car. Um, with that said, you may have been wondering, uh, I'm actually not Agent K from Men in Black, much as my name suggests. Uh, I can't pull off a suit for 30 minutes, let alone 24-7. I'm just an Associate Incident and Response Consultant at BlackBerry. And despite what my handle says, I am not related to, nor am I Baby Yoda. Apparently, it's a common misconception that's been going around, so sorry, not that cute. Uh, you didn't come here for my autobiography, though. You came here how to learn to hack a car, but virtually, because cars are expensive and big, some are ugly, and they're a little bit of an investment. <laughs> um, this is video. I took this video a few years back in college when I just got into this. Uh, this is my 2013 Camry, so it's a fairly new car. And I gave it a little bit of an aneurysm. Um, you see, obviously, the rev counter is, you know, going up and down across the range. And the engine oil light and the key fob light are flickering right above it. Um, essentially, I was spamming it with random packets. And the ECU, the engine control unit, was freaking out, trying to figure out what was going on. And so this is where the danger comes in. Uh, you can send a command that may permanently have like a check engine light that comes on. You have to pay a diagnostic fee or maybe you uh, do something with the brake system and cause it to not work at some point. Um, these are things you kind of do at your own risk. So if you break something, I'm not liable. And just one more look because I think this is absolutely hilarious. Um, so you might think, guess that, you know, a car has a lot of computers. I had already mentioned one, the engine control unit that manages the engine and all about it. But as you buy a newer, a newer car, as well as a more advanced car, you're going to find that there's a lot more computers in a car. Um, a $10,000 Nissan Sentra may only have like, you know, um, your radio, your air con, your gauge cluster, steering, brakes, engine, you know, like the bare basics. Uh, then you get lucky and you buy like a $90,000 Audi or a BMW. All of a sudden, you'll have a computer for things like adaptive cruise control and automatic braking, uh, keyless entry, blind, blind spot detection, uh, navigation system, and, you know, it goes on and on and on. Uh, the point I'm trying to get to here is they all have to communicate somehow. They're all interlinked, and um, that method or how they're interlinked is the controller area network bus or the CAN bus. Essentially, it connects all of the computers and modules in a car together. Um, it doesn't matter if it's something as important as the engine controller or as insignificant as like your seat controls or you like your light controls or the charger in the back because who cares if your kid can't charge the tablet, you know? Um, they're all interconnected to this network in one way or another. Uh, Canvas first started being developed in 1986 by Bosch Electronics, and in 1991, Mercedes, uh, like they tend to do with a lot of the newer technology that sort of trickles down to other cars, uh, brought a car to market with, with CAN. Uh, this is this car right here. It's a 1991 Mercedes S-Class. It's the W140 chassis. It's all You've probably seen one around. These things are tanks. You know, they're known for it. But uh, essentially, Mercedes brought this to market the first time for the first time. Uh, you might be wondering, well, okay, there's a network. How do I interface with it? You know, how do I mess with it or how do I get information from it? Well, um, in your car, there's a connector called the OBD2 connector. It's the onboard diagnostic two connector. Um, this is a pinout right here. This specific connector has been a worldwide standard since 1996. 
any car after 1996, if you want to be safer for like 1997, for whatever reason, um, they will have this connector and these pins will be standardized. They're going to be the same no matter what. Four and five are going to be your uh, grounds. You will have a 16, uh, pin 16 will be your 12 volt volts and uh, six and 14 will be your CAN bus um, pins. Uh, this not connects not only to CAN bus, but to things like LIN bus and maybe something weird and proprietary the manufacturer has going on. Um, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm going to be referring to CAN high and CAN low as just CAN bus, just to keep things simpler. Um, and you'll see why. Um, essentially, some things may have a higher priority than others on can high versus can low. Like if I go back, you kind of want your brakes to be a slightly higher priority than your lights. Uh, that's just my guess. Maybe the manufacturer thinks something different. I kind of hope not, but you know. So can high gets higher priority for things. Uh, but for the purposes of this, we're just going to assume it's a flat topology because we're not going to be doing too much. And you guys might be wondering, well, okay, history 101. Why are we still talking about the 1990s? Um, well, the answer is modern cars haven't changed much. Canvas is still the standard for basic communications between all the computers on a car. There's only been a couple of minor um, revisions since 1991, and the core principles are still the same. Um, some manufacturers will do things like run multiple CAN buses at the same time in parallel, but they can still be accessed through uh, the same OBD2 port with the same pinout. Um, and if you've ever been interested in cars, you might not know that Canvas fully exists. Um, essentially, OEMs practice security through obscurity, meaning they don't talk about it. Um, they'll talk about, you know, our engine control unit is brand new and a lot faster or whatever, or we have more computers, but they don't necessarily directly mention Canvas. Um, so the most you generally are able to find are the original Bosch white papers, some other white papers. Um, and researcher research done by other fellow security researchers. Um, maybe they've hacked their own car or someone else's car. Um, so this means that Canvas is fairly old and still has some of the same vulnerabilities that it did back then. Um, but, you know, so far you might be thinking, okay, well, there's only one way to access it. It's through the port in the car. Well, um, as we add newer and newer technology, more computers to a car, it adds more attack vectors. Um, you might have a cellular connection for your navigation system. You might have an in-car Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, you might have Bluetooth to play music through the radio. Uh, these are just more and more attack vectors. It's just another way to gain access to the system. Um, and slowly but surely, this is starting to sound an awfully lot like just pen testing a network. And the answer is it kind of is. Um, when you interface with Canvas on a laptop, it shows up as a network adapter, meaning you can just pop good old Wireshark up, plug everything in, set up the interface, and you are ready to read Canvas and inject packets if you have the hardware. Um, $20 gets you an adapter to plug into your car and read packets, uh, make a packet dump even. Uh, we'll get more into that at the end, but essentially it's not that expensive, uh, relatively speaking, to start car hacking if you happen to have a car. Um, it's just a serial connection that you make with the OBD2 port and your laptop. But we're not here for an actual car because, like I said, they're expensive and you kind of don't want to break a car if you only have one. You can all do this virtually. Uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, all you need is a laptop or a virtual machine. I'll be doing this in a virtual machine. Um, you can actually do the car hacking with a physical car in a virtual machine as well. But uh, for the purposes of this, I will be using Ubuntu 20.04. Um, you can use whatever distro you want, um, as long as it has a couple of prerequisites. The two that we're going to be going over are CAN tools and IC SIM. If you have some weird aversion to Linux, you can also do this on Windows using a program called Busmaster. Unfortunately, I found it to be a little finicky and you kind of do need a real car for the most part, unless you can find a database online. Um, so I'm not going to be going over that. Uh, last but not least, most importantly, you need patience. Uh, this is really tedious, this entire process, and you might get a little frustrated. Uh, anger management classes are always great, or you can just buy food. I prefer the food. It seems to be cheaper, and it 
it's pretty good. But enough of that, on to the show. First of all, I just mentioned that you will need can tools and IC sim. Um, IC sim is this lovely program made by Zombie Craig, and essentially it provides a virtual gauge cluster and controller for your quote unquote car. Uh, right here, you need can tools and these prerequisites. You also have to be able to use the make file in here. Uh, this is, you have to compile this yourself. So it's pretty distro agnostic. Um, these controls are from Ubuntu, but all of these um, you can find on other distros and can utils is also on GitHub. Um, if you want to get more advanced, Jay Gamlin has this script which pulls a lot more tools such as Kayak and Care and Caribou uh, amongst others, including ICS, IC Sim and UD Sim. Um, by the time you guys will see this, I also have my own fork. Unfortunately, I've run into issues with uh, this one in the past and currently between different Ubuntu versions. S there's not really much difference, but hopefully by the time this airs, this will be updated to work on both 18 and 20. Uh, the same with Gamblins, this might get updated as well. Anyways, I have a pretty clean um, Ubuntu 20 install. And as you can see, I'm gonna start from the bare basics. I'm actually gonna uh, delete my previous directory to show you what you get when you first uh, clone this from GitHub. I have to, can't do that. I'm gonna clone it and I'm gonna change directory. So for, uh, first you have to run the make file, which is do make. You'll see that goes on pretty fast. You'll notice you have controls and I see sim, but before we get to play with that, we actually have to set up the VCAN, the interface. We're gonna set up VCAN. I've already done it, um, so no need to do that. Um, the next steps are bringing up the actual interface, the network interface. We're going to mod probe vcan. I've already done this. I'm just going to go through the command history. And then we're going to run uh, these two commands. They're just IP link commands to bring the interface up. And when you run IP, uh, when you get it all done, you'll see when you run IP link, you have this as a network adapter. These instructions are also on uh, Zombie Creek's GitHub page, so I'm kind of breezing through them real fast. but. Now that we've got IC sim installed, we will change directory to IC sim, and we are going to launch IC sim to VCAN zero. See, and we have a gauge cluster. Wow, this is your very own Ferrari. Not really. Um, I don't believe you can actually make this bigger, so I'm sorry if this is a little small, but uh, you have a your speedo, your tickers, and your car car doors, um, which will be here. Now this is pretty boring. Nothing's going on. Uh, to get things to actually work, you need to also launch the uh, controls package as well. Controls and then vcan zero. Uh, before we do this, don't forget. I'm going to show you real fast. Like I said before, this shows up as a network adapter on Wireshark. And this, I'll leave this in the corner here, but you see it's pretty dead right now. There's no packets going through. As soon as we launch controls, we'll see a couple of things happen. One, instantly packets start flooding the interface. You know, something's going on. Uh, next, you'll see this needle is slightly moving. The engine, quote unquote, is now idling. Now you have this amazingly drawn um, DualShock 3-ish controller, better than I can draw. Ironically, despite this being, you know, a PlayStation controller or whatever, you need an Xbox controller um, unfortunately, I don't have one on hand. Uh, some say I had a really rough Halo game and it was thrown. Uh, I'm going to play the fifth on that one. But if you don't have a controller like me, you can also use arrow keys. And as you can see, I'm, well, I'm holding the up arrow on my keyboard and the gauge cluster is moving up slowly but surely. We also have the tickers and these are turning green. And you can also mess with the doors. So that's great and all. You've got a simulated car. But now we have to actually read and inject packets. You can either do this through Wireshark, take a packet dump, go through at your leisure, or there's another tool in CanUtils called CanSniffer. Uh, CanSniffer will take all these packets and sort of congest them or com compress them into this. Uh, whatever repeated uh, IDs you have, they will be here and whatever's changing will be in red 
if you use the tag C like I did. See, okay, there's just no packages, but it is fairly hard to kind of correlate all of this together. Um, so this is what I meant. You need patience because this is a game of sort of recording what you see here, correlating it with this, injecting packets and praying it works. Um, two things, we don't have time for that. And I also like to cheat a lot. So since I'm a dirty little cheater, I just happen to have another VM with all of the <laughs> commands right here. So real fast, I'm going to copy this one here. And I have a second terminal here. And so this is just can send. I'm going to send this packet to vcan0. Okay, nothing happened. Let's try again and again. And you'll see right there, just barely it flicked to 280 at the other end. But this is tedious. You're not going to want to stand around doing that. So I'm going to go back because I'm too lazy to actually write this very quick and dirty uh, uh, for loop. We're doing 280 miles an hour, one of the fastest cars in the world, uh, with occasional stops back to zero, which kind of hurt if you're in the car. So in less than like three minutes, you already have a, a virtual car going and we're injecting packets, but um, add a little more time because dirty little cheat. Um, so that's pretty cool and all. Uh, you can probably find that after like a couple of minutes of work if you just kind of spam all these IDs. Um, but let's say you get bored of that. Let's say you've already recorded all of this. Well, the great thing about uh, can uh, IC sim is that it also has a randomizer in it. If you use the tag R, you can generate a seed value. Please go over here. And move this over to your controls. We're going to use the C value with the flag S and then VCAN0. Boom, so it's back to working. We see packets. But if I do this, uh, okay. I was hoping that would be in my history. It's not for whatever reason. If I do this again, it's not doing anything. Uh, that's simply because the values have changed. Anytime you redo the C value, it'll change the values. I mean, you have more things to work with. Um, if you get bored of this, you can also go on further and further with the other tools mentioned in the car hacking tool script. You get more things to play with and more things to emulate. Let's say you get bored of this, you win the lottery and you buy a brand new car. Someone gave you a free car. Amazing, I'm kind of jealous, honestly. And you wanna break it. I mean, um, you wanna hack it. <laughs> Sorry. If you want to hack your car, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a laptop, unless you prefer dragging your rig out uh, to the garage. Or if you can fit your rig in your uh, your car in your house, I'd be also jealous of that. Um, you need a PC, uh, Linux, Windows, whatever. Um, if you want to get just started off with looking at Canvas, this is an Elm 327 off of Amazon. This specific one is $20 on Amazon. Uh, you have some downsides with it being extremely limited. Uh, there's you run out of buffer space real fast. You can't inject packets, but you will see some Canvas packets. And the next step up, and if you have an Arduino like Uno on hand, this is great. You just need the shield board. Uh, this is the Can the Seed Studio Canvas Shield V2, long name. Um, put this, plug this in with your Uno. This serial port goes out to your Canvas, and you have USB going to your laptop and you can read packets, you can inject packets, and you can have all the fun in the world um, as long as you don't break something in your car. If you want to be a little more professional, I suppose, or have an easier, like, custom-built solution, the Cantact exists. Uh, this is the original Cantact. This is what I started out using. It's by Evan, and I can't say his last name, Evan Chick. Sorry if I butchered it. Um, that thing was, like, about 75 dollars all in with the two cables you need to connect to the car and to your pc amazing you can do everything uh, i believe it's being now replaced by the cantact pro which lets you do two can interfaces simultaneously and your pc and has a couple of other cool things like a bigger buffer i believe so um that's all you need to get started uh, to inject packets and stuff just one of these guys patience 
and probably fearlessness because uh, this is kind of risky on your roll car. So yeah, uh, that's that. I believe we are going to be having a quick Q&A right now. So I will see you there.